welcome back to the moon magic tarot channel thank you so so much for joining me um as very much requested um this is a star seed reading and in today's reading we are asking what is your role in the current accelerated evolution of humanity um, and we're really looking at the next three months because your role may change you know you guys have an important part to pay to play in the evolution of humanity and we really are in a place of accelerated growth so i will be doing some starseed readings on a very regular basis um, super souls if you want to get notification of those and any of the other readings i do if you subscribe and press the little bell icon they should come into your stream so we are going to draw three cards And we are asking, what is your role in the current accelerated period of evolution um, for the collective humanity? Those are our three cards. And we are now going to draw some runes and charms as well. have a look so for reading number one reading number one you have um spirit messages observe limitations spirit messages this is your card for reading number one you have cupid's arrow a little a little cupid angel and you also have the rune of breakthrough okay so that is uh, reading number one Reading number two, you have divine will. Wow, let go of fear. Okay, and your, your rune is the rune of fertility. These runes are coming out loads at the moment. Um, and you have the feather as well, the charm of the feather. You then have uh, the rune of journey and the notes, the music notes, and your card is expansion. Okay, wow. Amazing readings. The energy from these readings is incredible already. So with the Rune of Journey and the music notes. I think it's a treble clef. Is it? No, it's not. It's just music notes, isn't it? Okay, so Super Souls, I'm going to leave the video running for just a little bit longer so you can take your time if you need to. Then I'm going to be drawing the cards for each of the readings first. And so what you'll find is the t in the timestamps is a timestamp for the drawing of the cards for every reading. Um, it will allow you as well, give you, it'll give you a bit more information about the cards I'm using as well, if you are interested in those. And then I'll dive straight into the readings. The timestamps are all in the information box and the comments for phone users. So you can just fast forward to whichever reading or readings or drawing of cards, whichever um, part of this video you want to tune in with. Um, the uh, timestamps are all there for you. Super Souls, I will see you in the readings um, in just a moment. Welcome to the drawing of the cards for reading number one. So for those of you that are interested in the cards that I'm using, um, this pack that we're already using, these are the Sacred Spirit reading cards by Anna Stark. I will put all the um, names of them in the information box and the comments too for you guys. Beautiful pack of cards. Now we're going to draw several um, from several Oracle card packs today. The first is a Rumi Oracle pack. The second is from the Enchanted Map Oracle Cards. Okay, this is really interesting. I'm just kind of seeing both of these two. Definitely two cards from this pack. It's always really interesting when we draw the cards for the first reading because it tends to sort of almost set the pace um, for the number of cards that we're drawing. I'm now also going to use 
um, these are guardian angel reading cards as well and we're using one from this pack I'm going to use the wild um, the wild Kuan Yin Oracle as well again I'm seeing two cards from this pack so quite a big reading coming through today already for you guys I'm going to leave those cards there, the oracle cards, and I'm now going to draw from a couple of tarot packs. It felt really important to use the Akashic Tarot, um, particularly as this is a starseed reading. There's so much um, karmic energy coming into your readings um, and so, so relevant to look at where you are and what your contribution is at this time. So we're going to draw from the Akashic Tarot and I'm hearing four cards actually for this. I'm not of course ruling out the drawing of more cards when we're in a reading, but these are just the cards that we're starting with. And I'm also going to use the Tarot of Opposites today as well. And I think there will be six. So one, two, three, four, five, and this one here, I'm seeing six. Okay. I say the Tarot of Opposites. It's actually the Tarot of Oppositions. I'm not sure if I said that right. Okay, Super Souls. So um, we will now move through to the readings. I'm not going to draw the cards for every reading. I will do them literally before each reading because I want to have the full packs for every one of the reading because sometimes the same cards show up and there are links between maybe one reading that connects to one part of our lives and yet another that connects to another bit of your world and those two pieces of, of your world are interconnected because you know you are a whole person and so it can be you know for me it's a really important thing rather than just dish out or, or draw cards for every single reading I like to do each reading with all of the fullness of every single pack but it's just a preference and I wouldn't rule out that changing I mean it's interesting isn't it I think we have to tune in with what um, with the guidance that we hear and what we feel is right at any given time um, okay super souls I will see you in just a moment in this reading welcome to reading number one so your main card spirit messages observe limitations with the rune of breakthrough and Cupid's arrow now this is really interesting because this is the depiction of a hummingbird, a spiritual hummingbird and hummingbirds, the essence of this, it, there's something about having to be adaptable and flexible, but I want to say it's like, do you know what's really coming through is to do with firing your arrows in the right direction. Now we are asking in this reading, of course, we're asking your, your spirit team, um, you know, what is your role in the current accelerated evolution of humanity? What part are you playing as a starseed child, a starseed spiritual warrior? So let's have a look at your oracle cards first. So you have Divine Mother Manifests. Okay, this is a very beautiful card. We have come together and we have magic stream. Okay. And we have angels of the universe. That's your next card. We then have her joy overcomes gravity and above you the lantern dancer. Okay. I'm going to place this up here. I think that's going to still be in camera there. Okay. This is very interesting. Above you, the lantern dancer. What I, what I feel is maybe you are literally right here and right now. Part of your role is, it's almost as if you are, it's as if you're holding the light during a period of, of uncertainty. I mean, we are seeing such a such a push pull of energy, such a, a such a polarity of of challenges um, within humanity collectively. Reading number one, 
And I feel like your role is almost that, I, I feel that you are holding people at a time of uncertainty. Your capacity to be resilient, to be durable, to kind of like to hold the light regardless of what is going on around you, to show that you that you are, that we are all interconnected human beings, that everybody has, as we know, you know, we are all made of star stuff. We're all made of the same stuff. And I feel like your role right here and right now is holding the light above you, the lantern dancer. It's almost as though you are, I think, for some people, you are a guiding light, but you're a guiding light through example, your, your ability to literally hold the light within, hold the direction, to walk that pathway, to share the fact that we can come together. There's something that you are doing within the, within the, yeah, the individualness of your personal life that is actually, do you know, for some of you, you're holding many, actually, just by being you. This is a really powerful reading. It's like you, you're able to bring love to situations, Cupid's arrow, to fire that, to, to hold that direction of love. And actually, interestingly enough, because of your ability, it's like you provide, um, you become a bit of a light bulb moment for quite a lot of people. You are really quite a significant light. Even during times of uncertainty, your ability just to walk a pathway differently. You know, I'm really struck here by this spirit messages, observe limitations. And I, I actually brought out, as I was preparing for this reading, I brought out this beautiful piece of, of honey calcite. This is a natural um, honey calcite crystal. And the shapes of it, you know, really are quite, and you see the, the kind of shapes of them coming through here. They're really being mirrored in the background of, very, very subtly, but the background of this car, car, this card, um, excuse me. And, you know, honey calcite is a stone of leadership. Hummingbirds always fly, that they bring bounty, they fly from flower to flower. They don't tolerate negativity very well. You know, as an energy, as a, as a medicine in Native American um, understandings and, and teachings, the hummingbird is a, is a bird that brings joy, pleasure, light, always happiness, always holding, holding the higher vibration. And in some way, shape or form, I feel that you are holding a higher vibration. We'll ask for a lot more information to find out more about your actual circumstances. But right here, right now, and, and I'm kind of focusing these readings in the intention, as I set the intention for these readings, it was very much about a period of around three months. And I think your contribution right now your role in the current accelerated evolution. It's like you hold hope, you hold the vision, you hold the joy, you help people to, to sort of remain intact, even during periods of upheaval or uncertainty, even if they haven't got a clue what's going on. There's something about you that still enables them to, to hold firm on their course. And it's like you are able to help people as well. I think find those kind of breakthrough moments, those moments of transition. You hold the positivity, the lens of positivity. Let's look at some of your cards, your tarot cards. Now, this is really interesting. So the first card from the Akashic Tarot is, um, is actually in reverse, one of scrolls on track. This is it in the upright position. And this is it in the reverse position. Now, most of you who follow my readings will know that I tend not to read cards much in reverse. I always feel I'm given the information I need anyway, but it's curious that both these cards have a reference point to reverse positions, these packs that we're using today. 
And it, it's quite useful in a starseed reading um, because, you know, you guys are walking that higher pathway of the spiritual warrior. It's the very nature of, of you know, being an older soul and why you're here. And, you know, in a way, what both of these cards show is, is what I would call the, the free will and conscious choice. They, they show the higher energetic choice and the lower energetic choice as well. Now, interestingly, the one of scrolls you see in reverse here, I think it's really highlighting the fact that you are part of people's guidance system. When they're not on track, you see king of scrolls here. When they're not on track, I think you are a part of what enables them to, to hold firm, hold steady. You bring a real gift in. You help them to, despite blockages, some, some of you are actually assisting people in a process of learning. You could be, um, you could be somebody who is a teacher or an editor or um, somebody who writes and your writing assists others helps them to clear the way you could be a speaker but you are we have the scribe and the king of scrolls here you impart wisdom through the very nature of of who you are but it's quite specific here actually your role at the moment is that you impart wisdom in a way that enables people to stay on track despite upheaval and despite underlying uncertainty and whereas I think they could kind of fall apart with the uncertainty you're the very essence of who you are and the way that you're living your life is helping people to recognize that we're all interconnected so when they feel um, separate or separated from even themselves or some you know the collected um, not just the collectiveness of, of, of the greater collective humanity, but, you know, and even the collective unconscious. Some of you may be therapists in some way, shape or form, but there is something of you that is showing people. Here we have here the five of ones, how not to compete. You're, you're able to help people to bridge a gap between this competitiveness you know, again, this is the division that we're currently seeing in the overall kind of almost like politics of, of humanity's consciousness, you know, where we can shift from a place where we're constantly competing with one another versus we collaborate. You're able to bring this around to a point where you, you actually help people to navigate their uncertainty and to start to work together. This is very, very interesting. Your role is very specific. I think what we're also seeing is a follow on here. So this part of your reading, Beautiful Souls, is really helping you to help people, um, helping you, showing that you are helping others with adaptability to observe the, the limitations, um, including those limitations that come simply that are self-imposed through an inability to handle uncertainty. So all that we have just spoken about is part of your role at the moment. But this is the shift that we're being shown in these cards. It's so very clear. You're showing people and you're able, there's something of your learning, your teaching, your wisdom um, that allows people to shift away from being competitive to collaborating. Okay. This is part of your, your, the bigger picture of your journey at this time. It's the outcome. Justice card, beautiful energy here. You are able to help people to move, um, to kind of assess, to come back into balance. You know, so rather than fighting each other, they can actually come back together. Nine of cups, you can help people to, you bring out the very best in people. The four of pentacles. Very, very interesting. We have a mirror and the robin here. Yeah, again, robins are very territorial. This card came out in another reading recently. And I remember saying, you know, robins are really interesting because although they are territorial, uh, although they are 
um, there's another aspect of what you're doing here, super souls, these really, these layers of assistance that you are bringing humanity through the very nature of who you are. You're helping people with boundaries. You're helping people to know that to define their individualism, what it means to be an individual human being, and this may be part of your own soul development too, okay, where you are able to define what it means to be a unique individual soul, living, a, making a very unique individual contribution, whilst also knowing that you're part of the collective. It's like being able to hold that individuality, walk that individual pathway, whilst knowing that everything we do is interconnected. So there's a very clear definition of boundaries. I think at some level of soul growth, this is also part of what you are doing for you here. Part of your own soul growth is this recognition of, it's like navigating your own success and knowing that you can, um, you can take an ownership of your own success. I, if there was a noise, a disruption in the background there, that was just um, the post arriving, a big something being pushed through my letterbox arriving there. Um, uh, that's very interesting as well. Do you know, I always listen to everything that arrives in a reading. Literally, this is like a big package of something has just arrived. It's been pushed through my letterbox, okay? This is very interesting because I feel that there's also something about you learning to navigate success in a way that allows you to both share it, but also this is the better bound around boundaries to share your success and yet also own your success simultaneously. So navigating um, the emotional attributes of that because you know there are big issues around how to be a spiritual person and walk that spiritual pathway and own success and abundance as well you know for many people older souls that are returning in historically in former lives they've either walked a devout spiritual pathway where they've almost had to isolate themselves from normal the pleasures let's say of normal everyday life or they've swung to the other extreme where they've had an ordinary life, but they've struggled to pull the two together. And historically, that's been very typical of spiritual pathways, almost as if spirituality is connected to lack. And of course, we're now shifting to a place where consciously we know, actually, the more that we have, the more we have to give, you know. So there's something about you navigating success, um, your own evolutionary pathway is about navigating success, learning to hold those boundaries of being a, 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 a potentially very successful, unique individual, learning, you know, how to share, but also how to have for yourself. And this in turn becomes a role model. So there's, I'm seeing two layers to this reading, reading number one, actually, very, very interesting reading. Um, you know, it's a great honor to read for you because, you know, you, you guys are here to do this level of work. Yes, yeah, Seven of Swords. Now, this is really interesting because it connects to exactly what I have just been saying here. And the same with the Page of Pentacles. You know, there are choices to be made here. Okay. Um, you know, and again, this is about this reference point here to lack where it's been really hard for you, I think, in the, historically to feel like you can have an ownership of what you actually deserve, your right to make choices that are right for you. You know, we have this ownership here and, and this challenge around here. Okay, I'm actually going to place this card like this because it's really, really interesting for us to look at these two sides of the card here. And the same here with the Page of Pentacles. Again, it's taking an ownership of your own success. And it's, look at the way we have this, this figure here, looking at the ownership here. I was talking about the Robin earlier and I probably digressed actually, but Robins are very territorial. So they, they have boundaries. And yet, interestingly enough, they don't ever get into a competitive kind of fight that is negative or aggressive. They have a sing-a-thon where they, it, it's, you know, who can sing the sweetest and loudest song, who has the best voice um, to spread harmony. And, and that's the kind of the winner of the territory. And, you know, so things are harmoniously sorted out. But I love this person is, both of these people are looking 
at their wealth. They're looking at their success here. They're working out what to do with it, okay? So your, your own pathway, and I think this goes a little bit more than the three months, there's something about your own personal pathway here that is learning how to navigate success, okay? Learning how to align a spiritual pathway in ways that help you to take an ownership of your fullest potential as an individual, taking an ownership of your success, learning to share and to um, celebrate your success. It, it literally is, it, it's like this coming together of being able to be you. And again, look at the breakthrough rune. You know, it's like these two kind of opposites coming together. There's an equality here. There's a balance being brought into being here. So there's many layers of your journey um, at the moment, but I think in the immediate time, the immediate period, it, it, what your contribution to others is helping, you're, you're working in ways that are really helping other people to stay on track, to be leveled out, to navigate their own uncertainty. Amidst all of this, you are rising to a degree of your own success. I mean, absolutely, categorically, we're seeing that here with the Nine of Cups. So, and as you rise into a space of your own success, it's then about navigating ownership of your own success, ownership of your own fullest potential versus contribution and versus that spiritual pathway, having a balanced life, being able to have a wonderful home life, family life, having the stuff of life, and yet also having an absolute ownership of your pathway as a a spiritual being, spreading and sharing those spiritual messages. So there's a, a real double layer in your reading, reading number one here. Um, you do help people to overcome their issues, their, bound, their, their own blocks, their own um, uncertainties during periods of upheaval and polarity. You help people to work together um, rather than working in a competitive way. But it's fascinating as you rise into a space of your own success, there's a whole other layer of evolution, which is to do with um, balancing. Um, it's kind of, I want to say it's like having your cake and eating it, but from a starseed spiritual soul perspective, being able to have that, those material aspects of your world, as well as walking that spiritual pathway. Um, reading number one, this is absolutely delightful. Um, it is really lovely and I'm loving the way um, the messages are coming through here for you, validating not only your contribution within this period of time, but also your own stepping up and rising into your own fullest potential and ownership of your own fullest potential, you know, and you will yet again continue on that pathway of being a beacon for others, not just through uncertainty, but how to maintain this kind of balance, how to live a life so fully in this beautiful way. Reading number one, it's been awesome to read for you. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. Um, if you would like to get notification of any of my readings, um, do subscribe and hit the little bell icon. And may I also just add, if you are making comments and you don't see your comments coming through straight away, in order to just navigate the number of scams that are going on at the moment, we are seeing this polarity. There's a kickback, I think, as we rise towards the light, you know the dark is pushing and there is resistance and we see it everywhere. So in order to stop scamming and also to stop the people who, you know, come into our beautiful community here purely to kind of fuel their own agenda um, financially, um, we have now, and my colleagues and myself have um, now set up something so that your co all the comments that you make are automatically, they are all held for review. And what that means is that until we click on them, they don't go public, which stops anybody from then coming into the channel and targeting people with their own agenda. So please bear with me um, if it takes, you know, sometimes a little while for your comments to, to show up publicly. Um, you know, we go through all of them and approve every single one now. And even though that takes time, it offers, again, a really su super duper boundary 
um, for everyone who is here in this community. So it is something that we have, myself and a colleague, have committed to doing with every single comment that comes through. So don't stop commenting. Don't feel that your comments are not being heard. Um, I always read your comments anyway, um, but now um, we have a, a different system in place which is nicely boundary and, and is offering the protection that is really appropriate during these, you know, very accelerated times of change and upheaval. Super Souls, it's an honor to read for you. Thank you so much to all of you who are giving back through the Super Thanks. Thank you to those of you who are supporting all the things that I do through Patreon in an ongoing way. I hope you guys are enjoying your tutorials. I am loving doing them. If you're new to me or my work, um, for as an extra thank you to Patreon people who support my free library and all sorts and all the readings that I up upload here, all the stuff I do for free. Um, I am now doing monthly tutorials on Patreon um, all about learning to read the cards and the runes. Um, so um, thank you all of you and just thank you all of you for being a part of this wonderful, wonderful community. Um, really, truly blessings to you all. Welcome reading number two. Thank you for joining me for the drawing of the cards. So this particular card, your first card, Divine Will, Let Go of Fear. Um, this particular card has come from the Sacred Spirit reading cards and we're going to draw from various oracle cards first and I will put the, the names of all of these in the information as well and the comments. These are the Enchanted Map Oracle. Uh, we have and I'm we're drawing two cards from this pack. This is the Wild Kuan Ying Oracle. And again, hmm, I am seeing this card and this, two cards. Okay, now we're going to use an angel pack. Just one card from this. This is the um, the Guardian Angel reading cards. And I'm going to use a Rumi pack as well. Hmm, okay. I'm going to take this card here. Now the two tarot packs that I am going to use, these, so these are your oracle cards. I'm going to use the Akashic tarot and it felt really important to use these because beautiful souls you know uh, as a star seed uh, you are you are very very involved in the the karmic happenings of humanity's evolution which is partly why we're doing these readings right here and right now and why I'm going to do star seed readings ongoing so we're going to draw four from the akashic tarot Really interesting. I see this card just here um, sneaking out as well. And we're also going to use the Tarot of Oppositions. What I love about both these packs of cards is that I think they help us to see the higher energetic and the lower energetic of any situation. And as highly evolved souls, you know, Starseed people are, you know, here with work to do, with purpose. And so, you know, being, being very aware of the higher energetic and the lower energetic with any situation is very connected to your soul's evolution. So we're going to draw six cards from this pack. You're seeing this. And this one too. Okay. So beautiful souls, um, I will see you in the reading. Um, I'm just going to place these to one side and we will, um, yeah, uh, we will start the reading. We'll look at your oracle cards first. Reading number two, welcome. You've been guided to this reading by the card of divine will, let go of fear. You have the feather, which is always a sign, but isn't it an interesting feather particularly? It's very pointy, okay? Feels like very, very pointy, showing the way in some way, shape or form. And we have the rune of fertility. 
And this is a fruit bearing rune, but it often indicates a turning point, um, you know, like a uh, completion of beginnings. Something else is, is concluding first. But let's have a look at your cards. So we have the card of strength and we have the field of dreams. You have the card, hold on to me, and Sisters of the Spring, oh wow, look at this, Sisters of the Spring, Swallow, Good Fortune Granted. Okay. Wow. We then have Celestial, Ro Celestial Rose of Ma and Angel of Adventure. Okay, let's move our tarot cards over here for a moment. So reading number two. This is a really interesting reading because we are, we are looking at, you know, what is your role, um, very specifically in a way, what's your role for maybe a period of around three months in this period of accelerated evolution for humanity. What is really interesting, something is about to significantly shift in your world. Something is literally, a new adventure I think is literally on the verge of beginning. Something I think you've already been working on is literally about to hatch. It's about to come to fruition. I mean, look at the bounty coming in here. I think as well, it's gonna open up very, very quickly. Fertility, the rune of fertility, it's like, it's like you bring in the harvest. It, it's like springtime arrives, irrespective of the season and the time that you're watching this reading. I and mean, this is a timeless reading. It's like an adventure is about to begin for you. Something is massively about to open up for you. Really, really clearly. It just feels really magical. I mean, look at the the pathway being opened, the light, um, it's, it's like opening yourself to receive something. Receiving is important. Let's, I'm going to look at some of the rest of your cards actually before I dive into that, but I feel like Firstly, there's a definite shift. Something, something is about to come, I say to completion, but it, it, it's both completion and a new beginning. So you're about to hatch, something's about to hatch, it's about to open up in your world. It's seriously going to take off, it's going to move, it's going to, you're going to fly. I mean, your feet are not going to touch the ground. Something is, is happening, it feels very exciting, it's, there's a new adventure around it. Now you may actually find that you feel it's not unusual to have a wobble. We have the card of strength here as well. But you know, it's like, it's like there's the potential here for something. It's like the seeds you sow right now have the potential to become an oak tree. Yeah, something is about to big time open up, point you in a direction. It's a whole new adventure for you. Let's have a look at the cards that we have here. So first of all, we're going to look at the Akashic Tarot. Okay, so we have Eight of Scrolls, Paths Unknown. Here we go. Here's your new adventure. This is interesting that Uriel and the Sphinx is in reverse. If I show it to you in the upright position, Uriel and the Sphinx is a card that is about um, digging deep. And, you know, the Sphinx has been buried by the sands of time um, on endless occasions, you know, as the winds, you know, if you think about um, the kind of sand dunes in a desert, they will blow over and, you know, they could blow over and take over something as big as this. And then they will actually, um, you know, the, sand, the sands can be dug away and something can be refound. Okay, now this is in reverse, which to me tells me that you've you're uncovering something or you're finding your pathway, you're finding a new way of doing something or a new pathway that will open up avenues, not just for yourself, but for others. Now it's very interesting as well. I want to say something about the Sphinx that's really coming through very strongly. 
and I, one of uh, just uh, well I won't digress too much in, into who this is but a, a very a very 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 amazing person that that I have a wonderful connection with was telling me about the Sphinx and read to me from a book that she had uh, it was a book about somebody and I'm afraid I do not know the name of this person but I, I will perhaps go back and try and find out but either way it was somebody who had grown up um, in this area of Egypt and at the time because I think this person has possibly passed away but they wrote a book about their experiences and as a child they used to play on the Sphinx and because in those days it wasn't a, a kind of a cordoned off or like a tourist attraction or anything like that it was just it was just part of the scenery kind of thing it would be like growing up um, where I live here in Wiltshire and just growing up around you know Avebury or Stonehenge or you know some of the sacred sites Stonehenge is now all cordoned off but you know years and years and years ago it wasn't it would have just been part of the scenery kind of thing but they described in their writings as a child how when they played on the sphinx it was as if they entered a kind of a dream world like a journeying chamber of some sort just by being in the vicinity of it now the card is in reverse which sort of suggests for me that Pathways are being uncovered for you at the moment. Your role. You see, I think your role is about to become clearer. I think it's possible that you're not actually sure exactly what your calling or your pathway is. You may be watching this reading for exactly that reason. You're not actually sure what your calling, what your role is. And we may get more information in the other cards and we can always draw more to ask for more information for you. But actually, I think at this point in time, a doorway is about to open for you and you have a choice. Okay, and you're being encouraged to step, absolutely, initiation. Look at these cards, initiation and the Count Saint Germain. This is, um, this is a card of initiation. You're about to upgrade your world. Yeah, you're about to find, something's about to open up, to hatch. Um, it's either something you're already working on where it's going to just take off and take you into an accelerated pathway of uh, really, of it, this is to do with the abundance of who you are at a level of soul and your contribution. It's going to take you to a whole new level of, of your calling or purpose. If you don't actually know what that is, that pathway is about to open for you. It, you know, trust, don't be fearful, don't be emotionally overloaded by the idea of change not happening quickly enough. Uriel and the Sphinx, you know, we can get buried by sand, but all we have to do is dig away and, and the, the pathway will become clear. Um, it's a new pathway though, it's something is opening up for you that's either going to launch you, catapult you even, your feet aren't going to touch the ground into a new, whole new direction, or it's something you've been working on which will take hold and just flourish. The card of the willow, two of forces. The willow is a tree whose roots really run very deep, they find water. We see this kind of water, look at this energy and water in the background here. The swirling, the transition. Something is about to, reading number two, significantly take off in your world. It's going to catapult you to a space of higher and greater contribution. It's literally on the verge of happening. Now, I asked when I set the intentions for these readings for your contribution to you know your role as a starseed older soul you know what is your role in the current accelerated evolution of humanity for the next three months um, this is the beginning of a new phase of contribution if you don't yet know your calling for the next phase of your world it's going to become very clear in the next three months doorways are going to open if you're already working on something and you think it's to do with your calling but you feel it hasn't yet taken off it's going to take off Okay, we're really being shown this, this whole avenue of a new adventure. But there's something very new about this pathway for you. For some of you, it just means that it's something's going to take off. But 
but I think it's going to move very fast once it opens up. We'll look at these cards now, your other tarot cards, to see what else we're shown. So we have the Ace of Wands. Absolutely. It's going to take off. And what I would say with the higher and lower energetic of these cards, don't be fearful of change. Okay. Because this is going to grow. It's going to become fruit bearing. Okay, this is really, the opening for you is the right opening. Something's really going to take off. Don't be fearful of change. Trust, trust is needed here. You're being guided. Yeah, you're, you're reticent. Look at this, the higher and lower energetic here. We have, um, look at this, she's really not sure about trying, uh, trying this new, um, trying something new out. And yet it's like the difference in this sort of wine tasting between, you know, should I even dare to taste it? I might not like it kind of thing versus that sort of, hmm, I think I'll sample this and find out what it's like. Okay, so there's a really interesting duality taking place here. And look at this, this person here pondering, you know, do I go down the path that I'm familiar with, the one that's lit up, that I, I know, but there's another path here, paths unknown. There are two other paths in this, um, in this card. Do you take the familiar one? Or do you take a pathway that is not known to you? Do you risk stepping into a zone that is new, that is different? Yeah, do you try something different? Or do you, you know, are you open to the changes here? There's definitely some anxiety around, it's, it's like going with that, that big bold step into something new. But the initiation, it seems to me, is coming here. There is guidance here. I'm going to place this card just here. Now we have the three of swords. Absolutely. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing a dilemma around choice coming to an end here, which I think is really good because I have seen a little bit of anxiety around embracing these changes. Again, four of cups. Again, we have, the, it's interesting that in both of these, both of these cards we're seeing you know, both the Page of Cups and the Four of Cups here, we're seeing this sort of concern about tasting something new, being able to embrace the new. And yet it looks as if there is so much um, fruitfulness promised in a new direction, a new pathway, something opening up for you that is I want to say maybe um, it's either something that you haven't yet, it's either stepping into a space of the unknown, letting go of something familiar, or it's, it's also to do with being able to take an ownership of your own success and your own fertility, your own ideas. Yeah, maybe there's just a dilemma around choice as well for some of you. I'm seeing the choice and the dilemma around choice coming to an end here, which I'm really enjoying. We have the five of cups. This is delightful. And again, we've got the six of pentacles. We have this duality. Very, very interesting. Mm. What is super nice here? Reading number two. I'm going to draw some more cards for you guys because I want to follow this through. I, again, I think there's a, the part of the dilemma here is to do with, um, I, I think it's to do with embracing something and it's, you know, it's like, it's not that it's so much taking a risk, but it's, it's actually, there's something about believing in your own self-worth here. Believing in, yeah, there's, there's a real need to believe in your own self-value coming through here super souls we're going to draw more cards for you um beautiful reading number two because i want to follow through so what i'm seeing is some of you don't yet know your neck the neck you, you're really uncertain or wobbly about the next chapter of your calling others have been investing in something but it hasn't yet quite come to fruition all of that is about to change 
and you are being um, guided to not wobble over over the change you know don't wo don't worry your if your feet don't hit the ground that's really cool have confidence in yourself here let's draw some more cards to see what else we are shown um around um your own this this next chapter of your your part to play in in the accelerated growth that's taking place for humanity because something is about to shift massively we'll use a different tarot pack for this um I'll, i put the names of all the cards in the information box if you sat with me while i drew the cards you'll know a little bit about them and um, this is the new chapter tarot that we're going to use so reading number two we're asking for more information for reading number two to find out about more information about the role that they're playing and what this new opening and new pathway is about let's jump to these wow your first card ten of cups super fantastic and the full new directions magnificent we have the five of discs we have the four of cups We have the Eight of Discs and the Queen of Wands. Okay, right, very, very clear information here. This is super, guys, um, super, super, super fantastic. So this new pathway is really, really leading you to a space of genuine contentment, happiness. It's, it's going to complete something. Okay, so again, completion of beginnings is, is the rune of fertility. This is going to complete something. It's going to um, open a pathway. There are, it's absolutely a new begin, a space of new beginnings. So whether it's something that bursts and suddenly flourishes um, that you've been working at, or it's a completely new direction, it's going to, you're going to leave behind some aspect of your, in your own evolutionary growth and pathway, in your own soul growth you're going to it's going to teach you or allow you to take a full ownership of your own potential a completion in some way knowing your self-worth knowing your contribution so yeah whether this takes off or it's a new direction it's going to fuel your your own personal growth and learning what is really interesting as well though is you will um, th this indicates, I think, as well, that it will support you in. There's some aspect of higher learning or higher education involved here. So this is either going to take you again, it's a general reading, but firstly, it's going to build your self-esteem and teach you something yourself about your own self-worth. But in terms of your greater contribution, you may become someone who teaches others or indeed the next chapter will give you the learning and the teaching you need, the investment in yourself to move to that next chapter of contribution. So this is a really interesting transitional phase for you. So we asked when I set the intentions about the next three months, your part to play. It really does help to move you. You're about to shift to a place where your part to play, your calling, your purpose is going to become very, very apparent. Pathways opening for you. Part of this is the healing for you of your own aspects of your own self-esteem and your own self-worth, your own belief in yourself. Yeah, it's, it's a whole new adventure. Your confidence building. Clarity, contentment, self, I want to say satis, satisfaction, even self-satisfaction. But there's, yes, yeah, there's a real sense of things coming together. You're definitely going to leave behind any areas of self-doubt are going to be left behind which means that you can wholeheartedly contribute in this adventure this new calling 
that that's really the next stage, the next three months, the next phase for you is about stepping up, a pathway opening up that is going to take you in the direction of your calling, your pathway, your purpose. It will become much more clearer to you. You will find contentment and happiness and it's going to address some aspect of indecision and low self-esteem that's been getting in the way of you being able to like follow through with things. You are either going to be moving into a setting where you're learning and, in, and, and you're investing in yourself or indeed part of that move forwards. It's sort of a duality. It's also going to help you to invest in others. I'm not being given a clear indication beyond this sort of aspect of teaching and learning. But it's very clear the next chapter for you, um, beautiful, um, beautiful star seeds of, of reading number two. This is, this is a fabulous new chapter that is emerging. And, you know, if you've been feeling stuck, uncertain, it's going to shift very quickly. And we, we did ask for the next three months. So I think you can expect to see definitely a real move forwards, a real shift, leaving one chapter behind, moving into the new. I mean, look at the hairs showing up here and we have the fall, the new beginnings, um, you know, five of discs, leaving a chapter behind here um, into a place where you really... Yeah, you really start to know your own self-worth, your own value, your confidence, your, yeah, there's a, 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 such a, a greater clarity coming. So, you know, don't worry about this transition. Um, you know, there's so much guidance being offered to you here and it's very, very divinely guided. This is, pathways are going to be opening up for you. Don't be fearful of walking into a new pathway, stepping onto that pathway of the um, the paths unknown. Um, you know, we are seeing so much abundance and fertility and it's the building of you, the very nature of you is going to grow and emerge in ways that mean that you are then in a position um, to learn to grow and to flourish and also in turn, of course, that then makes a contribution to others. Reading number two, this is gorgeous. So Super Souls, um, if you'd like to get notification of any of my readings, this is a timeless reading. If you subscribe and hit the little bell icon, they should come into your stream. I'm going to be doing Starseed readings regularly. Um, many of you have requested those uh, about different areas, different things that are taking place for you guys. Um, if you are making comments, thank you so, so much for your, your comments, your shares, your likes, for subscribing. If you make a comment and you don't see it come up straight away on, on the reading, um, in order to, to manage and navigate boundaries around some of the scams that are going on and around people who are just, they're not coming into our beautiful community to share of themselves, they're coming in to try and gain, often financially. So what myself and a colleague have set up now is that every single comment that come as you make it all the comments are now held for review and what that means is that we then go through the comments and it means that we can protect you from anybody and protect this community from anybody that is coming into our space um, with ill intent or with the wrong intent and whilst we wish them love and healing um, we also wish to place a boundary around them so every comment is held now for review um, until we're able to authorize it so if your comment doesn't get shown publicly straight away. Don't let that hold you back from commenting. And it, you know, we are still reading all your comments. I always read the comments, even though I cannot reply to them all. I listen to what you have to say. And this has just been a way of being able to safely um, actually place some boundaries around um, you know, unwanted content. And so it's been a really good thing to do. So Super Souls, um, you know, thank you so, so much for, um, for being here, for tuning into these readings. It's an honor to read for you. Thank you to those of you who do comment. Thank you for those who give back through the super thanks in the comments. And also for those of you who support all the stuff that I do ongoing in the world for free um, and support my ongoing work on Patreon. Thank you as well. If you're new to me and my channel, I do um, 
on Patreon. Um, as a thank you to my Patreons, I now upload a monthly tutorial um, all about learning to read the cards and the runes. So thank you, Super Souls, for all of you who are a part of the Patreon community as well. Super Souls, um, beautiful starseed people. Um, it's amazing to have you here. Thank you for joining me. Tons and tons of love to you. Welcome reading number three to the drawing of the cards. So we're going to draw um, various oracle cards first. For those of you that want to know a little bit more about the cards or the names of the cards, I will put the, the names in the information box anyway and the comments for phone users. But these cards that we used for starters, the expansion um, Educate Your Mind and Senses. Um, this is from the Sacred Spirit reading cards. I'm going to draw um, a guardian angel reading card as part of the cards, the oracle cards for these readings. We're also going to use, um, these are the wild Qian Yin oracle. I'm finding I'm using these a lot these days. You'll probably notice them in my readings. I'm seeing actually this card here. We're going to take two from this pack. I'm also going to use the Enchanted Map Oracle cards. And there we have one. Okay, I will turn it over. It doesn't matter that we've seen it. There's no issue with this. And I'm seeing this one too. Okay. I will turn it over just for the sake of, um, you know, when we come to do the reading, I'm going to use a Rumi card as well today in our Oracle cards. Okay, now we're also for these cards, because these are starseed cards, um, it feels really appropriate. I've chosen two tarot packs very specifically because these are starseed readings. So these are the Akashic Tarot. And I think, you know, as starseed people, you are older souls, you're here with purpose. And so the Akashic Tarot are very aligned with the very nature of the of, of the people that you are, the souls that you are. They often tune in very accurately to a point of time in your soul's evolution. So it feels very appropriate to use this particular pack. We're gonna be using four cards from this pack. And there's your other two. And the other pack I'm going to use are, um, this, this is the, the Tarot of Oppositions. And again, because you are starseed people, I think this particular pack are very good because they show the higher energetic and the lower energetic of every situation. And it also highlights the, you know, the element of conscious choice or the level of soul growth that's taking place. Sometimes what's conscious, sometimes what is unconscious. So they're a really interesting pack for us to use for starseed readings. And I will be doing, um, I will be doing starseed readings on a regular basis, Super Souls. So yeah, if you want to get notification, don't forget to subscribe and press the little bell icon. Now we're going to draw six cards from this pack and I'm seeing those two as well. Okay, so we'll put our cards to one side, beautiful people, and I will see you in the reading. Reading number three, welcome and thank you to those of you who join me for the cards. So we have the card of expansion, educate your mind and senses. We have the rune of journey and we have the notes. Now the rune of journey is interesting because it, sometimes it's, it's a rune that does indicate travel, but I feel like just this card alone, it, there's something about bringing yourself back into balance here, back into a point, a, a place where you're singing your own song or doing something that's true to you. Um, I'm not going to say any more. Let's, let's look at our cards first. We'll put the tarot over here for a moment. So we have Angel of Comfort is your first card. We have Above You, the Lantern Dancer. 
Sisters of the Spring, this card is really showing up a lot. Sisters of the Spring Swallow, good fortune granted. Okay, so we're seeing a lot of transition. Now, obviously, in a way, this is a reading that is about transition. Um, you know, we are asking, you know, what is your role in the current accelerated evolution of humanity? Now, we have Magic Prayer and we have the card of Listening. Okay, we also have a new gown. Okay, I'm actually going to bring these over here. So let's just have a look at your oracle cards first. Reading number three. A new gown. This is really telling us such a lot about what is happening. Above you, the lantern dancer magic prayer and we're seeing this this transition this space of transition what's really interesting i i think maybe you have been you know, we're asking about what your your current role is but you know beautiful star seed people what i do need to say is i think you are transitioning something maybe for some of you there has been a loss And you know when you are in that place where we're almost fearful of, I'm going to use bereavement as an example. Now that will not apply to all of you, but you're moving from something into something else. It's a real birthing and opening up a new gown, literally wearing a new coat, as it were, a new phase of life. But... It's, I feel like for a lot of you, it involves leaving something behind. And I said I would use bereavement as an example. When we are transitioning through the process of loss, for any of you who are new to my channel, um, I, I was an accredited psychotherapist and counsellor. Now, when we transition bereavement, we go through a phase where it's really hard to let go of where we've come from. We kind of are resistant to doing the journey because it's kind of like we're, we're frightened that we'll forget. You know, we're frightened that we, or we feel guilty. It's like that step when you step into life again and you suddenly find that you've been talking to someone and you're, you're having a bit of a giggle and then almost, it's like this sudden moment of, of guilt. It's like, oh, I shouldn't be feeling this. I'm disrespecting the person who's, who, who I lost. It, it, there's a, a transitionary, um, space where emotionally we're navigating quite complex kind of feelings okay and it's part of the process your world is opening up here you know expansion it's time now to expand to push apart the boundaries to journey into the new to wear the, to wear the new gown in the knowledge that you, you will not forget there's, there's, there's a, a little bit of anxiety for some of you around this transition or almost as though you're not really allowed to have, um, to have joy or a feeling that you won't be heard. I, I do feel for some of you there's been a trauma, whether that was through the loss of someone or the loss of a situation, but there was, it, it felt traumatic, it felt challenging and it felt difficult and I'm very sorry um, for your for, for that that happened to you, whether that was, uh, you know, I'm whether I'm sort of, I'm, I'm sorry that you've had to experience something of such emotional challenge to transition through, but that's what I'm seeing here. Now you are being asked here to remember that there is guidance and support around you. Your, prayer, your prayers are heard, um, you know, you are supported, you are, you may not feel it, sometimes you may feel quite alone, I think some of you have felt quite isolated or alone with something, so whatever it was, you know, whatever that challenge was, it, it, it felt as if it was, it was really hard to, mo to move beyond. And it's like you've been testing the waters or, you know, I think you did feel quite isolated, whatever the outcome of that. Now, your part to play, your role in the current accelerated evolution 
I think in part, we need to look at the, the rest of your cards actually before we can really tune in with the outcome of this. But I do feel there's something about you being able to navigate um, that level of, of transition through difficulty, through trauma, but learning to listen to yourself, holding that spiritual pathway. Again, I mean, it's such a test of faith, isn't it? If we experience a really big event or big events or traumatic difficulties, stuff um, that's coming to the surface, and we think, oh, you know, I'm never going to come through this and out the other side. It's such a test of our faith. And I feel that part of your role in the current accelerated evolutionary growth of humanity, because we all are connected, we all have a part to play. And emotionally, there is a lot of um, trauma in the collective consciousness of humanity massive amount of trauma and some of it goes back generations so you may be here and processing something that feels very generational or you may be processing some loss in a very immediate way of somebody or a circumstance or a situation but something that was out of your control and i think part of your role um is about almost like processing and cleansing something of the emotional content of trauma in the collective in the collective consciousness of humanity because every single person every soul on this planet that is doing that piece of soul work is contributing to that stuff then not being repeated and done again or the evolutionary outcome of that it's like putting an end to something so it doesn't get repeated or growing through something so that others then learn to navigate the same challenges from a perspective of of growing and finding the silver lining in every experience you know it's a bit like someone who experiences a bereavement and then be, becomes a bereavement counselor so they then benefit the very experience of difficulty becomes a guiding light for others and helps them to navigate and find their way through something so this is I, I feel it is quite a complex reading in itself for you guys actually um, but that feels to me as if part of your role is navigating some aspect of trauma and on a personal level your contribution addresses something for others as well and absolutely holds a part in the greater collective consciousness of humanity let's look at your cards your tarot cards so we'll look at the um let's look at the akashic tarot first yes look at this so we have caught in the ruins your first card now this is an amazing card because in its upright position it shows people who are trapped and feel unable to move forwards in its reverse position it means you are ready to move forwards the timing is now perfect for you to climb out of something and in the clearing of the way it's exactly that even though there is a blockage here it's it's part of part of what is literally happening right now in an individual unique way your soul is doing the work of removing blocks clearing the way finding um, the ability to navigate challenging situations or a, a, a trauma that's left a residue whether that is as i said for some of you it could be trauma that's been held in the family reinforced again we have the card of the garden the garden show we have children here and because it's in reverse you know with this card we see this little boy here um, with a like a catapult the direction his catapult is going in shows us something of this card's indication it's looking in it's going in the past you know so you're addressing something from the past here at the moment that will allow sort of almost like innocence or purity to return despite trauma seven of forces um also in reverse here so you are helping to bring about balance things that are not in balance so your role your evolutionary role 
on an individual level, right here and right now, reading number three, is, is to be addressing something within the personal uniqueness of your life that is actually contributing to the resolution of some aspect of trauma, um, which helps to resolve this massive body of trauma that is currently held in the collective consciousness of humanity. If you only have to look historically, we have had trauma after trauma after trauma. That stuff is still happening. Those power orientated um, systems of relating and relationship are still being acted out. We're seeing resistance to that still taking place in so many situations and you are playing a part in the resolution of those things. This is such important work for the collective consciousness of humanity but it may feel very much as if sometimes you're on your own with it. I really want to honour that but acknowledge the bigger part that you are actually playing and really, you know, really, really respect, you know, that journey that you're on. Let's look at your other tarot cards. Yeah, so look at this. We have the Nine of Pentacles and I love these cards because of the duality here of, of the the messages. So you have nine of pentacles. Um, if you look at the duality here, we have something that can be shared here versus somebody holding on to something. Okay. You're literally working with the letting go of stuff. It's like you're embracing a lesson that allows you to shift patterns that have contribute to, contributed to people acting out unconsciously. And part of your role is the shifting of those patterns. It's very interesting here. I'm gonna place this card here, showing us that duality. And then we have the duality being shown again with the Queen of Cups. You know, in the upright position, she is really strong. She embodies self-care. She knows how to hold those boundaries, how to embrace self-care in a way that is not selfish, but is actually, um, it, it's, it's healthy. It's that point where self, we know that self-care is an act of consciousness and not an act of selfishness, but it can be indulged to the point where self-care is used as an act of selfishness. You are embracing that balance here. So you're really embodying this, these massive um, heredity, heredity, hereditary, is that the right word? Yeah, hereditary issues. King of Swords, we're seeing this in the upright position. Beautiful energy here. Again, you are developing that clarity of mind that means that you can be very conscious in the way that you handle life. Because sometimes we have to, when you're working through trauma, we have to really hold, it's like we have to bypass the ego mind and hold the higher mind, the higher consciousness to navigate these challenges. Now, very interesting because I think this relates to childhood stuff here, whether this is, you know, we're talking about a level of inner child work five of roses you know really indicates past stuff as does um the six of cups past stuff often connecting to inner child work um, also showing that we're changing things for future generations so really super card here showing you know the real navigation of these challenges um, we have the six of swords here really really interesting transforming um it's literally fi finding the pathway forwards navigating that pathway forwards navigating to a pathway of hope super super lovely and the card of temperance here as well really interesting so we see the ability here to hold everything in balance you're learning how to give and receive you're learning how to not overgive, you know, to the point where you burn out. Again, these are these family inherited potential life lessons that connect to, you know, if we become an overgiver, you know, sometimes even overgiving is a defense. When we overgive, it stops people from giving to us. Maybe it wasn't safe for you to receive as a child. You're addressing, and that in itself is. It's a different level of, of trauma. Actually, what I want to voice, it's what I used to call in my therapeutic practice when I was talking to people about, about this kind of stuff. 
it's what I used to call the trauma of normality. When we have experienced the impact of trauma through maybe ongoing um, lack of emotional responsiveness, the on, you know, the everyday stuff where we, you know, you could be fed and watered, but not responded to, not related to, where you, you just feel like, I met so many people who used to feel like, even though they knew they were in their blood family, that they used to think that they were probably adopted. They would have dreams of being adopted because they just didn't fit because nobody ever related to them, listened to them. And, and we get, we develop really complex patterns where we, maybe we overgive in order to defend because it's not safe to receive maybe people gave to you but only with an agenda attached to it and these kinds of things actually become quite traumatic um, but it's what I call the trauma of normality it's not obvious but there's a very big ongoing subtlety to the impact of and again family patterns are often passed down um, from generation to generation that reinforce things that aren't okay attitudes perspectives and we're seeing here with the card of temperance you know learning to give and to receive, learning to be balanced about things, knowing when to give, knowing when to receive, knowing how to hold your own, knowing how to establish boundaries, going way back to childhood, addressing some of those ongoing hereditary patterns. And that could include the way that, um, you know, I spoke about bereavement to start with, the way that bereavement is managed, you know, where perhaps emotions were never acknowledged or validated, loss was swept under the carpet, no one could talk about it. That could be a generational thing. But your work, reading number three, is very, very clear. It is all about your role, um, you, you know, your role here is about shifting uh, um, patterns that connect to difficulty, challenge or trauma. It's very present for you at the moment. And in the next three months, when I was um, setting the intention for these readings and in my preparation, I was asking very much about what's happening in the next three months. And for you guys, the next three months, the journey for the next three months is almost about you being able to learn to sing your own song again, to find your own song, to shed the patterns, let go of the coach that you were given to wear that was never one that really fitted you. Or indeed, if you've experienced a loss, um, being able to come through and step back into life. But for many, it really is about wearing the coat that is right for you, singing your own song, letting go of patterns that made you feel either traumatized, um, isolated, not connected to, not related to you, things that blocked you from your own progress. Um, and in turn, you are actually massively contributing to, it's kind of like the buck stops here and patterns are no longer repeated because you are doing them differently because you are doing this level of soul work. What is super lovely is now in these next few months is a period of massive transition for you where you shift through and beyond something that has previously held you back. So, I mean, this is a very powerful level of soul work um, and yeah, this massive collection in the greater collective consciousness of humanity, there is so much trauma that is still held and acted out. And every single person on this pathway of resolving these kinds of things is making it possible for humanity to emerge and evolve and live differently. Big, big respect to you. So reading number three, thank you so, so much. It is an honor to read for you. Um, if you would like to um, get notification of any of my readings, this is a timeless reading, so whenever you're picking up on it, um, if you subscribe and press the little bell icon, um, my readings should come into your into your stream. I have li I'll put links to all sorts of resources that I put into the world that help with emotional and psychological um, movement forwards. I'll put all sorts of links into the information box and comments for anyone that wants them. 
if you are commenting and you don't see your comment come up immediately showing you know in the public stream in the under the video um, because there are so many people again it's that kickback to this evolutionary growth we're seeing so many people scamming or coming in and commenting just because they're fueling their own agenda so what we have done myself and a colleague we are now every single comment that's made is held for review and it means that we go through them um, and make sure that it, it offers protection. It stops anybody who is trying to comment with their own agenda involved. It stops them from being able to, to do so. And it means that we can protect you um, and protect this community from people who are coming in with an agenda. They're not coming in because they wish to be a part of this amazing group of, of, of you. Um, you know, this is you. So thank you so, so much. Don't let that stop you from commenting. We will um, we will go through them and they will come through um, at some point. It's just that we can only do so many at a time. Super Souls, thank you for joining me. Thank you all of you for subscribing, sharing, commenting as well. And thank you for those of you who are giving back through the super thanks in the comments. You are really appreciated. Your contributions are appreciated, as are all of you who are supporting all of my work ongoing on Patreon. And um, if you're new to my channel, um, my Patreon people, I am now uploading a monthly tutorial. We're doing how to learn to read the cards and the runes. And every month I put a tutorial um, it's an extra way of me giving back a little bit of extra thank you to my Patreon people who are, you know, supporting all the work I do ongoing. Thank you all for being here, for, um, for the work that you are doing individually at a level of soul growth and evolution. This is big stuff and I'm sorry for whatever challenges you have faced, but you are making a monumental contribution to humanity at large. So thank you. Big respect and tons of love.